been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off, you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Dre Foster. And the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 240. This is section E of a multi-part instruction. Similar to a nation sending an ambassador into a territory, Jesus commanded the body of Christ to go into all the world. Although your kingdom assignment is in the world system, it is not in you. Jesus Christ is. You are his anointed carrier of the presence of God as well as the power of God. Your appointment is to bring the world into the kingdom of God until it is proof positive that those who have turned the world upside down are come here to really upside down is right side up. Now this first section, I will address the atmosphere of heaven and earth and the kingdom of God is light. In Genesis, the first chapter and the first verse says, and God created the heavens and the earth. Now, verse number one shows that there are millions of years between Verse number two. So verse number two says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Now, when we look at verse one again, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. And... He did not create them like it appears in verse 2. For between verse 1 and verse 2 is when Satan was removed from heaven. And he is a one, along with a one-third now demons, who corrupted the earth that made it void, dark. Now this word God throughout Genesis the first chapter means Elohim. That's God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. So when it says it is the Spirit of the Lord that moved upon the waters, you know that the Spirit is light. And then it says, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. This is in the person of Jesus moving forward to the front as the Word of God. For God, the Father, is the architect of them, but they're all working together as one. Now it says the light was made before either the sun or the moon or the stars were created. Therefore, we must not attribute that to the creatures that are God's instruments, but only which pertaineth to God. So it was God's light. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit's light that recreated the earth in verse 2 and beyond. Now let's look at the atmosphere of heaven from Matthew the 17th chapter and the 4th through the 6th verses and from the King James Version. This is when Jesus was transfigured on the mount. And this is what Peter said after he saw Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. He said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. For if thou wilt, we can make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud 
overshadowed them and behold a voice uh, out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and were sore afraid let's look at this word voice in the greek it means a sound voice noise language a dialect now it is also akin to the word phano in greek which means to bring to light to cause to appear and then from the thayer's greek lexicon it means to shine shed light to be bright or resplendent to become evident to be brought forth into light come to view appear so it's not just the word or the voice of god but it is the light of heaven that's manifested so when we look at the speed of light it moves 186 thousand miles per minute so let's look at this word from psalm the 147th division the 15th verse says he sendeth forth his commandments upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. His word runneth as fast as a speed of light. Then also let's look at his word as his voice. The speed of sound that operates 767 miles per hour. And this promise from Psalm 107, the 20th verse says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So you can see that God's voice and God's sound moves to change things in the earth. Now let's look at the kingdom of God. In Colossians, the first chapter, the ninth through the 14th verses, from the New International Version says, For this reason, since the day we heard about it, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, Holy Spirit, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord to please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So the kingdom of God is light. For he rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And then just one more verse for this section, we are going to look at Luke, the 11th chapter, the 36th verse from the Living Bible. And Jesus said to his followers at the time, it will be us as well if you are filled with light within with no dark corners then your face will be radiant too as though a flood light is beamed upon you so what is the recurring message we like to share with you today jesus secession plan names you as his change agent to serve as his divine purpose, plan, and path in one or even all seven mountains. Number one, government. Number two, business. Number three, media. Number four, education. Number five, arts and entertainment. Number six, religion. Number seven, family. Every kingdom of God assignment is established on the word of God as well as executed by the spirit of God. If it is not, the mission will be an obstruction against your own breakthrough. Your minimum 
contribution is by prayer and petition that is to intercede and your maximum contribution is by practice and participation in the spheres of influence God has chosen for you that is to intervene. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section two, and I will address transforming the atmosphere of earth until it images the atmosphere of a heaven. In Hebrews, the first chapter, the third verse from the Amplified Version of the Classic Edition, we talks about Jesus, and it says, he, this is Jesus Christ, is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and he is a perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. So that is a mighty Rhema word, which is a poured forth word of the dunamis power, and that is miraculous power of God. So every time that Jesus speaks, it is a rhema word of God, of dunamis power of God. Now, when he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Jesus is the light of the world. He says when he is in the world, he is the light of the world. And then he says we are the light of the world, which means that when we reflect his light, we are the light. We're not our own light. We actually reflect the light of Jesus. Now in Psalm 97 from the Amplified Version of the Classic Edition, It is attributed to David as the author, and this is showing praise and petition and proclamation as well as an invitation for participation in the praise of God to bring heaven to earth. And he says, the Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of owls and coastlands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him as at Sinai. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries round about. His lightnings illumine the world. The earth sees and trembles. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Let all those be put to shame who serve graven images, who boast in idols. Fall prostrate before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad and the daughters of Judah rejoiced in relief because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints, the children of God. He delivers them out of the hand 
of the wicked. Light is sown for the uncompromisingly righteous and strewn along their pathway. And joy for the upright in heart, the irrepressible joy which comes from consciousness of his favor and protection. Rejoice in the Lord, you consistently righteous, upright, and right standing with God, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So when we are activating psalms like this into our lives, we are addressing several different audiences and definitely the audience of God because he is the one we partner with in the earth. Now let's look in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the 6th through the 11th verse from the King James Version because now we could see what Paul is saying to Timothy. He says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God. So he says, a kindle anew the grace endowment that you receive. So that's what we do when God gives us a call. We need to keep our fire lit. He says, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. So it was an impartation that came from God through Paul to Timothy. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but we have a spirit of adoption. He says, and of power and of love and a sound mind. And that sound mind is the wisdom of God. And he says, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So the power of God here is the dunamis power of God. He says, don't shrink back when it looks like you are being afflicted because of the gospel who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So letting you know what God has called you to do is not an afterthought. It's not too late for you to do it because it was planned and you were chosen from the foundation of the world, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life, and that is physical present and the future existence and immortality, which is an unending existence to light. He has caused it to shine. He has caused it to brighten life and immortality through the gospel. Whereunto I'm appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. So Paul knew exactly what his call was because Holy Spirit helped him as well as Jesus instructed him what he would be doing. And that's important that we understand we get that call and election, which is an invitation as well as a selection from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now in our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Big Cleave, as he presents Jesus at the door. You see, Jesus is knocking at the door of our heart and we want to answer it and say, come on in Jesus, be the Lord and savior of my life and let me participate and be your partner in what you have us to do in the earth at this time. We're not supposed to shrink back in the hide, but we should be the light he has called us to be. So let's hear Jesus at the door, Big Cleave, and I'll be right back. Jesus at the door trying to pay you a visit. Jesus at the door trying to pay you a visit. Jesus at the door trying to pay you a visit. Nobody knows the hour when the door will appear in his 
almighty power might be too late to clean doorbell my ring too late to sweep the flow see him in the peephole if he wasn't such a stranger you would let him in but you'd rather be with anger when it's see his best friends last night you agreed had to have a poker game no wonder you ain't hear him when the doorbell rang see lust came through in your party till five you didn't hear your name he was calling you outside and lies spent the night yeah he telling you wrong as the story goes on you missed another ding dong envy in the kitchen jealousy in the basement strife in the attic yeah this whole house hating lord ain't gonna keep waiting he'll bring the demolition get satan out the closet he wanna pay you a bit Gotta manage my temple, gotta handle my payments Gotta take out the trash, gotta do house chores See my body is a temple and it belongs to the Lord I'ma live with love, let me kick anger out Envy, jealousy and greed, y'all too gotta bounce Lies also gotta go, say and leave you evicted I don't wanna hear it, this the dwelling of the spirit I'ma paint my dough red when disaster arrives And foundations fail, I'm still Tar got my pitch when the flood waters peak. I'm floating on top of it. No, this house ain't sand, no, this house ain't wood. Yeah, this house is made of bricks, so this house is standing good. Behold, Jesus standing at the door knocking. So, what y'all gonna do? Who is it? Jesus at the door trying to pay you. Visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section three. And I will address the atmosphere of the power of darkness seized and keep it that way. In Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the 12th through the 17th verses from the Amplified Version of Classic Edition says, How have thou fallen from heaven, O light bringer and day star, son of the morning, speaking about Lucifer? How you have been cut down to the ground. You were weakened and laid low, the nations, O blasphemous satanic king of Babylon. And you said in your heart, I will send to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now the stars of God would be considered Jesus the Messiah. And that is actually what the meaning is from Hebrew. He says, and I will sit upon the mount of the assembly in the uttermost north. I will send above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Now that's what Lucifer said in his heart, and that's what he conveyed to the one-third angels who are now demons. 
And it says, yet you shall be brought down to hell, Shaul, Hades, to the innermost recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrew its cities, who would not permit his prisoners to return home? Yes, that's the one. So when we look at the footnote, it says the Hebrew for this expression, light bringer or shining one, is translated Lucifer in the Latin Vulgate, as well as that word in Greek is shown as a title for Christ, but in this sense that Jesus is the radiant and brilliant morning star, which you can see that in Revelations, the 22nd chapter, the 16th verse. Now, when we look at Satan's impact in terms of in the earth, it is a who chooses him. In 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 12th through the 15th verses from the expanded Bible says, and I will continue doing what I am doing now because I want to stop those people from having a reason to brag or boast. They would like are looking for an opportunity to say that the work they brag or boast about is the same as equal as ours. Such men are not true apostles, false apostles, pseudo apostles, but are workers who lie, deceitful workers. They change themselves to look like disguising themselves as masquerading as apostles of Christ. This does not surprise us and no wonder since even Satan changes himself to look like disguises himself as masquerades as an angel messenger of light trying to fool people into thinking he is from God who is pure light. So it does not surprise us if Satan's servants also make themselves look like masquerade as servants who work for what is right of righteousness. But in the end, they will be punished for what they do. Their end will match their deeds. So you can see that Satan, when he was in heaven, he was lusting after the light that Jesus had. And so that fueled his choices to say, oh, I want to be higher than the highest. And that is what caused him to be thrown out of heaven. And then when Jesus came into the earth, Jesus destroyed Satan who had the power of death and delivered us who through the fear of death were all our lifetimes subject to bondage. Now what we want to do is look at this while those ones who are masquerading as a light could be light, but they turned it into gray areas. We'll make sure we move the gray areas out of our own life. Now from the book, How to Receive and Maintain a Healing by Charles and Francis Hunter. This is Charles' testimony from his visit to the throne room where he met with God. And he said, God spoke of the graveyards of stars in outer space. He said, there has been a great speculation about the empty spaces in heaven. He explained that the reason it appears that there are dark, empty spaces is that the gravitational pull of stars inside of themselves is so strong that it bends their light rays back inside. So the stars go out and consequently they do not give light rays anymore. The black holes do not mean that there are no stars there, but simply that their light has gone out and they cannot be seen. The black holes are the graveyards of stars. God said that when our thoughts turn inward, we become just like the stars that are wandering 
in the darkness. He also reminded me that the earth is a wonderful place because the whole earth is filled with his glory. He let me see an increasing number of people turning to him, not a people backing away, not a surrendering of the church, but a church triumphant. Satan turned inward in heaven and his glory and light went out because of wanting to please himself instead of pleasing God. Satan came to earth to Eve and convinced her that if she would disobey God, turn inward and prize herself and her desires above God, she would gain. But when she turned inward, her light went out. She lost her soul and the wonderful, beautiful place on earth provided by God. Now, when we turn inward, we find that every negative attitude arises within us and no longer can be the light of the world. We cannot even reflect the light of Jesus. So we have to know that there's no living in the dark. There's not even living in the gray areas are permissible for us, but living in the light. And that is living in the light of Jesus, which seizes darkness and keep it seized. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing, not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section four. And I will address the atmosphere of the kingdom of God in the earth, in you and through you. Jesus teaching about the Beatitudes in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the first through the 16th verse gives us a way to look at how we are to be like him and he live in us as a light. Now, when you think of being blessed, you're blessed to be a blessing. What God has blessed, no one can reverse. And what God has blessed, no one can curse. So when we look at the Beatitudes, We're looking at doing something that's so like Jesus called because we are his body. And he says that how they treat him, that's how they would treat us. So this he says, and seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth. This is the word of God that he's releasing the voice of God, the light of God, and taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward 
in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And then he says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, that means it becomes tasteless, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. And he goes on to say, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know why? Because we have been glorified to glorify God so that they can see Jesus as he really is and be as Jesus is in this world, a world overcomer. Now let's also look what it says in John the 11th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse from the Amplified Version of the Classic Edition. And the disciples said to Jesus, Rabbi, the Jews only recently were intending and trying to stone you. And are you thinking of going back there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? Anyone who walks about in the daytime does not stumble because he sees by the light of this world. But if anyone walks about in the dark, he does stumble because there is no light in him. The light is lacking to him. He's saying that there is a source, a light source that we need to have. And naturally he's saying it's the daylight. But for us, it will be Jesus' light. And it is the word, the voice, the light of the voice that we hear, that we follow and know that we are headed in the right direction. So he's assuring them that it was okay for him to go because uh, he was walking in the light uh, of his father and Holy Spirit had already rested on him and never left Jesus while he was in the earth once he descended upon Jesus. So he had the light of Abba and the light of Holy Spirit and the light that he was carrying. Now let's look at this for us. It says in Psalm 36, the seventh through the ninth verses from the King James Version. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings, showing that God is our defense. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life and in thy light shall we see light. That means that whatever God is giving to us, he reproduces within us for us to be that in the world. And this is as in thy light shall we see light. Let's also look in Psalm 97 division, the, the 11th verse from the Amplified version the classic edition says light is sown for the uncompromisingly righteous and strewn along their pathway and joy for the upright in heart the irrepressible joy which comes from consciousness of his favor and protection so we're under the shadow of the lord's wings and so in that we have the protection of god we also have the favor of god and it says that if we are to see light Light is sown for us to see so that for in thee is the fountain of life. Speaking of God and in thy light shall we see light. And that light is sown for the uncompromisingly righteous. Let's also look at this last verse we're going to share from Psalm 119. And this is the 130th verse from the King James Version. It says, the entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding to the simple. 
what we get then is the wisdom of God that we should have for every decision. So it says the entrance of his words giveth light. So those words must enter into our eyes, our ears, our heart, and come out of our mouth so we can hear them. And in that, these words will be his words his voice operating in our life, but also be light to us so that we can see. Now on our program today, you're still going to enjoy the music of Big Cleve as he presents Done Got Found. See, he understands that even though his life wasn't right at one time, he's glad that he done got found because he was walking in the dark until he got saved and now he's walking in the light so let's hear done got found big cleave and i'll be right back it's your boy c light here to talk to you know what's truly amazing what's that is when jesus came down uh-huh. conquered it's death him, and was raised from the ground Amen. you know for a while i was out there Fam, I was in too deep about the drum. Tell him about it. But you know, he got me out the valley of the streets and I was found. Let's ride. Breathe. It's the sea life. I didn't got, got found. found. Used to be a clown. clown. Now heaven bound. bound. I ain't trying to brag. I worship cash stacks. Big body lacks. Rims and rats. But the Lord took that. that. Cleaned up my axe. See life on fire for his name when he rapped. Rap. I didn't got hired. Got legal paperbacks through the wire saying pray. That I relapse, Please. but he's so whack. And Jesus is the truth. Here to tell you, I'm amazed at the things God do. For example, I was a fool with a bad attitude. So rude, no screw. So only out to lose, yo, dude. He erased it. I got a clean slate. He played things great. Blessed, I'm straight. What's in the hood on the back streets? Posting, now I'm out the woods from his mercy. And I'm focused. I done got found. I done got found. Like I was a dang, dang. here to pass the word, word. Cause I'd rather be clean than to live my life cursed Like Apostle Paul, I deliver like a prophet And I ain't trying to go, cause hell be the hottest I'm just saying, stick to the plan Dante always said to worry about the other man Granny always said ain't nothing wrong with brand Cause without the man, I'm not the man John 10, 10, 10, that's one of my scriptures. Hey. Total with the crowd, that mean both arms lifted. A new revelation, uh-huh. know how to live now. I accept that for my savior, I'm that mean I got found. I done got found, I done got found. I done, I done, I done, I done, I done. King's portion again the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out and this is section five and I will address the climate and culture control to prevent the authority of darkness Jesus teach about the light 
in Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 22nd through the 24th verses from the King James Version. And it reads, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You have to remember every created thing is there to serve the purpose of the kingdom of God. So Jesus teaching here, when we're speaking of our own eye, that the light of our body is the eye. The eye in this case is the vision of the body. So if our eye, our vision is well illuminated, clear and transparent, then our whole body will be sound whole. And when we are congruent with Jesus, who really is the head of our body, and that could be the body of Christ, but also our head, then it's going to be preserved that way because we are congruent with him. That is the place where we can see Jesus as he is and be as Jesus is because he is our source, our supply, and our surplus. Let's also look in the writings of 1 John. This is John the Apostle. So 1 John, the first chapter, the first through the eighth verse from the King James Version says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. So now we're talking about the voice of life. We're talking about the light of life. And Jesus here is being referred to by John, who is the eyewitness that he saw Jesus for himself. He said, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us. Jesus is eternal life. That which we have seen and heard and declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. So he's showing the relationship of fellowship is showing the relationship as congruent with our father, as well as Jesus, the son of God. He says, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be be full. This then is a message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And I'm going to say that again, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That means that the God, the father whole universe is absolutely the truth that we can absolutely trust at all times. He says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, and that is he is our source of light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin because we look at Jesus as our source of light, our supply of light, our surplus of light. He says, and if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let's also look in 1 John, the second chapter, the first through the 11th verses. And it says, my little children, these things are write I unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And that advocate in Greek means intercessor. Jesus Christ is our intercessor, the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins. And propitiation in Greek means he is our atonement 
for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He has said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, that means guard his word. In him truly is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. And he that saith that he abideth in him ought also to walk even as he walked. That we imitate Jesus Christ. He is our example and we follow him. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is a word which you have heard from the beginning. He's showing that the truth never changes, but the truth changes everything else. And then he goes on to say, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Let me say that again. The darkness is past and the true light now shineth. So that is our perception. That's how we move about because the light that we have in us seizes darkness because it stays congruent with the Lord because we are congruent with the Lord as one. And it says, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him because the light dwelleth in him and the love of God dwelleth in him and the life of God dwelleth in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. That means that now while he thinks he can see naturally or even spiritually, his eyes are blinded and they are obscure. So there's dumbness and darkness in his life. But you have to know it does not have to be you. And even now, this is a time where you desire that you want to be the light in the world that Jesus needs to light. Or it might be you who coming back to the Lord to need to be relit. But this is the time for you to come to God and ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life through Jesus Christ's finished work. So why don't you say this prayer to me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and the only way that I can be saved is by accepting Jesus' blood sacrifice for my life. And I ask you to wash me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness, that you will forgive my transgressions, that you will cover every sin and that you impute not any iniquity upon me. And even my spirit, you'll find no gal. And I'm asking you to come into my heart, be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I recognize that old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. And now I am the newest creation in the body of Christ. And I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com that's info at kingsportionlive.com and we'll send you some encouragement along the way now let's return to many portions of king's portion live after this message from our sponsor we invite you to visit our new interactive website please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org that's www kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. 
and this is section six and i will address the climate and culture control to permit the kingdom of light in proverbs the 13th chapter the ninth verse from the amplified version of the classic edition says the light of the uncompromisingly righteous is within him it grows brighter and rejoices but the lamp of the wicked furnishes only a derived temporary light and shall be put out shortly how our light increases because we have the light of the word and the light of the holy spirit and we're giving jesus more space on the inside and we are crowding out anything that will cause him not to be king of that space in proverbs the fourth chapter the 11th through the 19th verse from the amplified version of classic edition reads i have taught you in the way of skillful and godly wisdom which is comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of god i have led you in the paths of uprightness see there is a wisdom of god and there is a wisdom of the world but we're choosing the wisdom of god because it's when you walk your steps shall not be hampered your path will be clear and open and when you run you shall not stumble take firm hold of instruction do not let go and go not in the way of evil men avoid it do not go on it turn from it and pass on for they cannot sleep unless they have caused trouble or vexation their sleep is taken away unless they have caused someone to fall for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence but the path of the uncompromisingly just and righteous is like the light of dawn that shines more and more brighter and clearer until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day to be prepared the way of the wicked is like deep darkness they do not know over what they stumble let's also look in second corinthians the sixth chapter the 14th verse from the Amplified Version of the Classic Edition, it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them, inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership have right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness? Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? And then let's also look in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the first through the sixth verses from the Amplified Version of the Classic Edition. It says, therefore, since we hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God, granting us favor, benefits, opportunities, and especially salvation, we do not get discouraged spiritless and despondent with fear or become faint with weariness and exhaustion we have renounced disgraceful ways secret thoughts feelings desires and underhandedness the methods in art that men hide through shame we refuse to deal craftily to practice trickery and cunning or to adulterate or handle dishonestly the word of God. But we state the truth openly, clearly, and candidly because it's the light. And so we commend ourselves in the sight and presence of God to every man's conscience. Why? Because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all so he is our accountability partner in life but 
even if our gospel, the glad tidings, also be hidden, obscured, and covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God, is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscured, only to those who are spiritually dying, and veiled only to those who are lost. For the God of this world, that is Satan, has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah, who is the image and likeness of God and is able to recreate them so that they can be like Jesus as he is. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves merely as his servants, slaves for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts. So as to being forth the light for the illumination of the knowledge of the majesty and glory of God as it is manifest in the person and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So you see here that this light that shone out of darkness was from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then in the face of Jesus Christ, he became our Savior. So now we are the habitation of God through Holy Spirit, where Jesus Christ lives in our hearts by faith. But we are the light of the world, and when we shine Jesus, he becomes the light of the world because we are reflecting him to others so that they can see Jesus as he is and be as Jesus is in this world. How would we like to leave this program today? Never give your seat of authority to an already failed world system. Let Holy Spirit reposition you to always see Jesus as he really is, the King of Kings. Then grant the Lord of Lords all the living room he requires without issuing any eviction clauses. As your space restrictions are demolished, you can be as Jesus is in the world, a world overcomer. In other words, you are living on top of the world. It is not living on top of you. This is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.